Following vigorous campaigning by various human rights organizations, the UN has issued an urgent call for Saudi Arabia to halt the execution of a young man who faces imminent beheading and crucifixion for crimes he reportedly committed as a young kid. So, we covered the story in the beginning, right? You, at least you did, Jose. Now, Mr. Al Nimer, he's he's a young kid. He's 16 or 17 years old in 2012 when the Arab Spring um, started to come around, and he was apparently associated with some protests that were going on. Now. That is, yes, enough to get your head cut off and crucified in Saudi yeah. Arabia, unfortunately. Now, look, we don't really know what happened as far as him admitting to these crimes. Uh, the reason why everyone's getting on Saudi Arabia's case for this specific case, because who knows how many people this happens yeah. to, you know, all the time. We just don't hear about it. This is getting a lot of attention and traction in the media because they're saying that he was tortured and he was also forced to sign a false confession which led to his sentence of, of the crucifixion. So a lot, of, a lot of human rights organizations, Amnesty International has come out, and, and now we're talking about the UN here that actually penned up this whole plan and are please saying, you know, please immediately halt this execution. They're saying it's because Saudi Arabia is not going along with international law regarding how you're gonna go about your, your, your legal mm -hmm. justice system. So a lot, of, a lot of attention being brought, uh, brought to this. Uh, we, we've talked a lot about the executions that have been going on in Saudi Arabia. 175 people this year alone, that's more than ever. So it's clearly on the rise, and, and I'm just wondering why. I mean, here's the thing. Saudi Arabia right now is under the eye of the whole world. Where this issue, the disaster that happened in Mecca, the previous crane disaster that happened in Mecca. So right now for Saudi Arabia, it's, it's a critical moment in terms of global views of the country. Now, the UN comes and say, please take a look at this case. But at the same time, they do allow them to be part of the Committee on, on Human Rights when it's one of the countries, like you mentioned, 175, almost twice as much as the, comp the total for last year. Right. They were only 84 on 2014. Now we're almost twice as much, three quarters into the year. So we see that at the heart of it is a need in Saudi Arabia to quiet down the centers and those who like him, raise their voices and say, I don't, I, I don't think this is the right way. I don't think you can treat us this way as a government. We have a right to express ourselves and we have a right to express what we want as a government. But in Saudi Arabia, like you mentioned, that will get you lashes, that will get you beheaded, that will get you crucified and made an example out, terrorizing the rest of the population into thinking twice before they join a blog or before they go to a protest and share the information and make a post. And I think that's a critical aspect of human rights that if at the heart of it is the lack of respect for the human opinion. And then that extrapolates to this type of punishment. Right, I'm glad you mentioned the word terrorism because that relates to a point that I'm about to make here. Now, he's sentenced to crucifixion under Islamic penal code. Now, crucifixion is called for uh, in Saudi Arabia's law when someone's charged of attacking and targeting civilians and causing deliberate harm and or terrorizing them and that's why he's being convicted because he apparently was attacking targeting and causing deliberate terrorism by joining this protest so not only do they crack down on just simply speaking out for what you think and what you believe in but they flip the script and they make it seem like you're a terrorist and you're harming other people. Not that they're extremely strict, it's that you're crazy and you're terrorizing people and causing harm to the population. To the kingdom or the population? That's, that's, that's what the I don't understand. To the kingdom, and obviously, because Saudi Arabia you know, works so hard to establish themselves to the world as the protector of the Orthodox Muslim religion, the right way of the Muslim. They den yes. denounce ISIS on their brutality, but at the same time, they do engage in violence in the same way. And, you know, that's a broader conversation about Sharia law and, and how it's, you know, the life under it. But at the same time, you cannot think of beheading as a punishment and still be part of the UN Human Rights Committee. Yeah, so I think it doesn't make sense. But at the same time, we see that some of the Western countries that compose and allow Saudi Arabia to join, they can't afford to not be commercial party. They can't afford not to be security partner with them because at the end of it, Saudi Arabia is the most powerful country in the region and the most strategic to have relationships with. So we sometimes, meaning their government, not us, the, the, the people, but the governments do have to kind of look the other way in order of human rights to 
you know, be comfortable enough to do business with them. Well, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily looking the other way. I think it's, it comes down to that fine line between are your laws crazy and outdated and draconian, yeah. or is this a matter of us having to respect your culture while you respect ours, right? I mean, I, it, it gets difficult, and we always talk about how they do crazy stuff in Saudi Arabia, yet they're our biggest allies in, in that region. But at the same time, I think it really comes down to do you have to respect other cultures and be more open and just say, that's the way they do things. But beheading, that's just the way I think that's a stretch. Of course. It, well, plus know? beheading and then followed by a crucifixion publicly to make a statement and show other people this is what happens if you want to talk speak out anything against. bad about this exactly. kingdom. And... The fact that the numbers on the rise it just means that Saudi Arabia is going to have to deal with another way of coping with the changing world as it becomes more liberal and more open. I think eventually they're going to have to let women do things that they want to do, normal things like work and drive and do things that normal women should be doing. And the long, the, there's a long list after that. But I, I just think that they're going to have to cope with the, uh, the, this changing world in another way as yes, opposed to, to crucifying and beheading. <laughs> okay. Let us know in the comments below. What do you think about Saudi Arabia being in the news for a lot of different reasons um, at this very moment? More specifically, the case of Mr. Al Nimr being crucified as well as beheaded just for participating in something as simple as an Arab Spring protest and speaking out against the kingdom. Let us know in the comments below and if you haven't already subscribed to the Lip TV 2 for more.